Good morning, kids. So I was sitting here thinking, like I do, and <laughs> I, uh, I was going over the video from last night, this morning. Um, I do this a lot. I actually will watch some of my older videos. Uh, just, you know, some people could say that it's avarice. Or, or ego, but in reality what it is is that I remember that I said something and then I will not really know exactly what it was that I said and I have to trigger the thought process in my head that was going on at the time. <coughs> and that happened today. I was sitting here and I was watching uh, last night's video and I realized something. I realized that one of the big uh, uh, arguments that you're going to hear from guilters with regards to all of these internet searches and shit that went on on Bobby Dassey's computer, and I've, I've actually heard this since Kathleen Zellner dropped her motion right before this one, or supplement, whatever the fuck, um, a lot of them said, oh, well, how do we know that Stephen Avery didn't access it? Or how do we know that Brendan Dassey didn't access it? And, you know, blah, blah, blah. It still doesn't prove that they're not guilty. It doesn't prove that Bobby Dassey and Scott Tadic had anything to do with this. And I call bullshit. <laughs> I call bullshit on that thought process. And I'll tell you why. Because we've already seen that Ken Kratz had a propensity for... Um, subscribing information to somebody else in the case that, you know, was actually from somewhere else. And we, we saw this with the, um, with the, the shit of Teresa Halbach saying that Stephen Avery creeped her out. She actually never said that. It was the, the auto trader employee that had that route before her that said it, and Mr. Kratz found it expeditious to reassign it to Teresa Halbach, and of course he would reassign it to Teresa Halbach. She couldn't say otherwise. She couldn't get up on the stand and say, no, I never said that. You know, it was easy for him to do that. So I was sitting there thinking about this this morning. A sip of coffee. And I got to thinking, okay, what angles could we look at about this that, you know, other people will sit there and say, oh, well, you know, Stephen Avery could have blah, blah, fucking blah. Listen, kids, Ken Kratz is one of the dirtiest fucking prosecutors I've ever seen in my life. That does have her. The only one that I have seen that is any dirtier is uh, Krista Hartman from the David Thorne trial. She's the only other prosecutor that I have ever seen that could top Kratz in more ways than one, uh, when it comes to dirty dealings in the courtroom. I mean, at least Mr. Kratz, for all of his bullshit, at least Wilbur, didn't stomp his foot in the middle of court. I, I shit you not, I wish I was fucking joking about this, but this actually happened. This Krista Hartman uh, stomped her foot in the middle of open court and would, like, actively whine at the judge. And then would sit down after uh, questioning somebody and would look straight at David Thorne and make her fingers into a gun and say, and mouth to him, gotcha. Yeah, the, this fucking bitch that went through three years of law school and is now a judge behaved like a fucking schoolyard bully in the courtroom. So at least we've got that going for Wilbur. You know, he didn't, he didn't act like a spoiled toddler in court, he just acted like a complete jackass. But <laughs> I'm just saying, if there's a silver lining, there's that. Um, but the fact is, is that if there was any way that Wilbur could reassign these searches to Brendan Dassey or to Stephen Avery, you bet your ass he would have done that during the trial. He would have loved to do that during the trial. He would have loved to be able to say, you know, oh, Stephen Avery, look at these searches. Oh, Brendan Dassey, look at these searches. That's a smoking gun right there. That would have just proven his point. So the mere fact that, that, that none of us have even heard of this until now tells you that Kratz knew good and goddamn well that there was no way he could reassign that. And that is how you know that 
Stephen Avery and Brandon Dassey are in fact innocent is because if, if Kratz couldn't figure out a way to reassign it to them, that must mean that there is proof pointing at Bobby Dassey and Scott Taddock. That's what you have to remember. You know, if there was any way that he could have, have reassigned this to either of the two men who have been incarcerated for this crime, and while we're at it, <laughs> I get all kinds of thoughts while I'm walking because, you know, I told you guys last night our car is, is in the shop right now. And uh, so I had to walk the kids to school this morning. Very refreshing. Lovely. And, and the great thing is, is that where I live uh, down here in central New Mexico, it's fall. It's autumn in every fucking part of the country. But... I get all the pretty fall leaves and all the prettiness there, but I don't get the super uber cold first thing in the fucking morning like the rest of y'all get. So it's, it's a lovely walk. It's a beautiful walk in the morning. Um, so I'm walking and I'm thinking to myself, you know, a lot of these people, a lot of these guilters love to say that we are, uh, you know, that us truthers are backing up a convicted rapist. Every last one of them says this, that you know you're backing up a convicted rapist, right? And it's like, okay, first of all, the one rape charge that Stephen Avery was convicted on was overturned on DNA evidence. And they caught the guy. They got him. There is no other charge anywhere in Stephen Avery's uh, uh criminal background of rape. None. Not a single one. Oh, well, he raped his ex-wife and he, he raped his niece. First of all, with the rape of the ex-wife, again, no charges. If there's no charges, you know, she was pretty bitter and pissed off anyway. So, you know, if, if, if he forced himself on her or did that thing, that male thing that you motherfuckers pull on your wives where... You want to screw her after a day of her taking care of everything and then she tells you no and you pout like a fucking toddler until she does fuck you? You know, that's not technically rape. I mean, it's bullshit. And quite frankly, why you guys think that whining about it is going to fucking do anything, I don't know. Sorry, but I deal with whining fucking toddlers all day long. I don't need another one on top of me. You know, so... That doesn't count as rape. If there are no charges, there are no charges of rape on that one. Therefore, it you know, it's circumstantial. It's a he said, she said situation. As for the niece, her mom is the one who alleges that Stephen Avery raped her. Number two, she's not even his niece. She's his, his step-niece. She's not even related by blood. Number two. And again, no charges. It didn't happen. End of fucking story. So knock your shit off. He's not a convicted rapist. Come up with another fucking thing. If you just don't like the guy, don't like the guy. That's fine. That's okay. It's okay to just not like somebody. You don't have to, you know, fabricate bullshit on why you don't like them. You just you can just not like somebody. I, for instance, don't like any of you. Guilters. I don't. I don't even fucking know you. You know, you could have some fantastic redeeming qualities. I've, I've conversed with quite a few fucking guilters that had some really awesome redeeming qualities. And it's like, great. I know of one who's a chef. Fan-fucking-tastic. The fat bitch in me is like, woohoo, chef, yay. You're still an asshole. <laughs> I don't even know you. I just don't like you. You know, it's okay to just not like somebody. You don't have to... Come up with stupid bullshit reasons on why you don't like them. Okay? It's okay. I promise. It's what adults do. They can admit it when they just don't like somebody for no reason. It's okay. <coughs> but the fact is, is that, you know, you guys like to say that he's a convicted rapist and he's not. There's not even any other charges of rape besides the 1985 case and his record. There just isn't. Sorry. You know, start, start using a little bit of this and everything will be Disney. Everything will be happy. I promise. And I wanted to draw everybody's attention again because, you know, I got like a shitload of comments on my video from last night. I wanted to draw everybody's attention again to the maroon uh, vibrator 
case, the, the vibrator with the maroon case that's listed in the CASO uh, evidence log, I want to draw your attention to that again because, again, this is evidence of Ken Kratz misappropriating evidence to where he wants it to be, but this is more blatant. This, this is a smoking gun, <laughs> such as it were, <coughs> so to speak, as my husband would say. That maroon case we have in Wiegert's uh, police report. We have him. Uh, we have some some flunky cop going into Teresa Hallbach's house and retrieving that piece of evidence. In that report, it stated that it was found at Teresa Hallbach's house, but then it's logged into an evidence log of nothing but stuff from Stephen Avery's house. We have it. I mean, come on. What are the fucking odds? That both locations had a vibrator in a maroon zippered case. What are the odds? If it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a fucking duck. The fact is, is that the, it's a little convenient that this maroon case with a vibrator in it was found at Teresa Hallbach's house and suddenly it's over here on the Castle evidence log with only items from Stephen Avery's house. That, to me, looks like they were going to swab it, and they figured they'd find Teresa Hallbach's DNA on it, obviously, and then would say that it was a vibrator that Stephen Avery used on her during the rape. That's what that says to me. And, of course, nothing was ever found on it, because otherwise we would have heard about it at the trial. But we didn't, did we? That's what's up with that seven pair of fucking dirty panties that they that they took from her house, too. There's no need for that much DNA from the victim for, for evidence testing. There's no need for it. If they have even one scrap of her DNA, that's all they need. Because then they can run any other evidence from the crime scene against that one piece of DNA. So there's no need for her lip balm, her hairbrush, her toothbrush, her dirty panties, her vibrator. There's no need. There's no need. To me, the seven pairs of dirty panties was them trying to smear her vaginal discharge around on things to make their narrative of rape sound good, to make it verifiable. For whatever reason... None of that stuff was either tested or if it was tested, nothing came of it because we never heard of it during the trial. If it wasn't heard about during the trial, but it was in the evidence logs, that's a smoking gun. That's a red flag there, kids. Because if it wasn't heard of during the trial, that means that there was no verifiable evidence that was obtained through the... I mean, you know, you don't even hear of, of anything coming from those panties being used to test her DNA against, you, you know, any DNA from the, from the, the crime scene against. So if there's no tests of DNA being run against by those seven pair of panties, then what the fuck was the purpose of collecting them? You don't hear of them being tested ever in any of the, the paperwork. Nothing. Nothing. So the fact that it wasn't run is, uh, run, run through the DNA testing, that tells you that they, there were dirty dealings afoot. The question is why? That's what you have to ask yourself here, kids. Okay, so the evidence ha hit last night. I haven't had an opportunity to go through it today. I was a little busy, you know, getting kids to where they need to be, making them a coffee, getting my head straight. So I'm going to start going through that evidence after I study a little bit. That's the more important thing here, kids. I can't help these people the way that they deserve to be helped if I don't have that law degree. So I'm going to study a little bit first, then I'll start going through the evidence. I'll probably throw up another video within the next day or so. Tomorrow, we're actually going to be out of town for my son's birthday. Uh, so I may not throw down a video tomorrow, but Sunday at the latest. So don't forget to subscribe to me here on YouTube. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Mama Phoenix 6 And if you boogie on out over to the About page here on my channel, you'll find everything from my Pinterest boards to my Facebook fan page to my Cafe Press merch store. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you soon.